Hey friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Emma LaFave and today we are going to be doing a line and wash painting of magnolias. So let's jump right in. Okay, so to start, let me go through my materials. I am painting in my Etcher Lab cold press watercolor sketchbook. I have my Windsor Newton Professional watercolors in my palette. I have my size 10 Craftimo brush, and I also have my Pigma Micron pen. So we're doing a line and wash today, and I've done one in the past where I started out with the line, um, the ink drawing, and then I put in watercolor, but today we are going to make it a little bit more loose, and I'm gonna try to start off with some loose watercolors and then go over it with some line work. So let's see how this goes. Okay, so the first thing I'm doing is mixing around the color pink that I wanted to use for my magnolias. Um, I just used some permanent rose and a little bit of cadmium yellow, and I took a bunch of that pigment off in my water jar, and I just started off with these really loose magnolia petal shapes. And I wasn't worrying too much about the shapes because I was gonna go over it, not exactly to the watercolor, but just in the general kind of shape. Um, even like kind of missing some parts of what I was painting. I was gonna worry more about the detail with the actual line drawing, and this was just gonna be the background wash. So just do these long kind of rounded petals. Um, they don't have really, really sharp tips. They're kind of rounded. And then after I was done with that light wash, I just went back in with some darker pink pigment. So just more pigment than water on my brush and drag the lines from the middle of the petals towards the base of the petals. I didn't want to lift off my brush in the middle where that I get like this little explosion of color. I made sure I went from the middle and down um, just to get those really nice color bleeds that you see in magnolias. And then I decided to do another one. Again, I'm not worrying too much about the shape of the petals necessarily. Um, if you want for reference, look at a reference photo of a magnolia just so you can kind of get an idea of the shape of their petals. They're on the longer side and they have a bit more of a rounded edge or tip like I was talking about before. Um, rather than a really pointy tip and then closer to the base of the flower it's always a little bit of this darker pink so when you're going in with that first wash always lighten up your pigment first start light to dark okay so I did that and then I decided to grab a little bit of this like blue like the tiniest bit of I think it was Payne's gray that I had left over my palette there just to add a little bit of shadow um, and just a, a different color so when I say the tiniest amount, I mean the tiniest amount. I mixed a lot of water in that little palette part that I was picking up and even rinsed some of it off with my brush. And I'm just dropping in in um, no specific areas, just kind of on some of the lighter areas just to get a different tone in the, the petals. <laughs> um, and really that's all I kind of did. So you'll see I'll do one more flower. Um, towards the bottom. I wanted to go in threes because I find that odd numbers with flower composition just always tends to look better than even numbers. It just looks a little more boxy and weird and you kind of want this asymmetrical shape when you're working with flowers in my opinion. So I then went with my light wash again with the pink and just did these really loose magnolia shaped petals. Went back in with that light Payne's gray. My Payne's gray is a li little bit more on the blue side so you could always use like a bit of blue or black however you want to do it. Um, and then you just kind of do the same thing. This one is more to the side perspective. Um, I did look at a few reference photos. I'm not copying from a specific one so I'm not linking a specific reference photo in the description. I just kind of looked at a bunch of different pictures of magnolias and just saw the way they kind of move. So the ones at the top are a bit more closed and this one is a bit more open. So try not to worry too too much about the detail. Just kind of do the general shapes. So again I'm just mixing that darker pink color to drop it in and always make sure your petals are wet when you're going back in with that darker pigment and like I've said in a lot of my water control videos when you are going in to drop some darker shadows or pigment make sure there's not a ton of water on your brush because if you do have more water 
on your brush than you're putting down on the paper, you might push away some of that pigment. Okay, so then I decided to start adding some of the greenery. I took some bright cadmium yellow and some sap green, and I just started to kind of encase the bottom of those flowers with loose greenery shapes. Um, nothing specific. Again, gonna work on that with the line work. And that's, that's that. <laughs> um, I, I decided to do a voiceover for this one um, because I really wanted to kind of relax and paint. And so while I was painting this, I was listening to some music and just chilling out. Um, I feel like this is not my usual tutorial style. I like talking as I go, but I really just needed to relax today and I wanted to paint something beautiful. So this is what you're getting. Let me know in the comments below if you like this voiceover style a bit more or not, or kind of listening to me as I go. I feel like it's going to be the latter, but you let me know. So I went back in with some burnt umber and I just connected all the flowers to the little tree branch. Um, just making it nice and jagged kind of like an organic shape again not worrying too too much because I will go over it with the the ink and yeah just that's that's about it so I do go back in with a bit darker brown after you'll see too um, created some little green buds on the tips of some of the branches like there and there just really loose shapes and kind of just sat back and relaxed with this piece so yeah, here I go in with the darker, the darker brown. These voiceovers just seem so unnatural. Um, I really do like talking to you as I, as I go, which I will do again for the next one. But so far, this is what you're getting. I hope that's okay. I think that's all I did. I needed to wait for it to dry. So we're going to let this dry and we will come back in with our line work. Okay, so for the line work, I'm using my Pigma Micron pen in a size 03. The size just talks about the thickness of the nib, so it's not too thick and it's not too thin. And I just started drawing over the shapes of the magnolia. So I found it really helps if you do look at actual pictures. You can even type into Pinterest magnolia drawings and you can get a better idea of outlines. And I just kind of looked at different petal shapes from different angles and just created some over top of the watercolor paintings. And you'll see that they don't fully cover exactly every little part of the watercolor painting, but that's kind of the vibe I wanted to go with. I wanted it to be loose and not going right around the edge of the watercolor. I, I wanted the watercolor to come out in different places or not completely cover every part of where I'm going around with my, with my pen, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, so I did that and then I did some line shading, which I've done in multiple of my line drawing tutorials of flowers. So my biggest tip is to always go with the curve of the petal. Never do just like a straight rigid line. You always want to have it curved. So look at the curve of the petal and go with that curve and it will just make it look a lot more natural and realistic. And then I did some smaller line shading in between some of the petals that are in the background, just making it a little bit darker. And you can see, I'm going to stop talking, um, and you can just kind of watch how I went around the whole piece with my ink drawing. <laughs> So now you'll see that lastly for this piece I decided to go back in with my pink color to add some more line work detail over top 
of the ink drying. So everything's dry and I just went back in with my paint color and did some detailed same kind of shadow lines that I did with the ink just to make it a bit more vibrant and darker in those shadowy areas. Um, I just think it made it look a little bit more bright and vibrant. And then I also decided to just kind of add in some loose shapes like I didn't even really plan like so there I'm just kind of adding some shadowy loose shapes on top. I don't know what my thought was with that, <laughs> um, but just kind of winging it just to add a little bit of texture to those petals. So I did that with a very light wash of the pink. And even though it's a really light wash, it looks darker because you're doing another layer on top. So I just added that with the pink. And I also do some with the a bit of the blue paints gray color after. So I'm just going to leave you with that to watch. So then as you can see, I added a bit of paint splatter just for a fun effect, and that's about it. That is our Line and Wash Magnolias. Thank you all so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram for even more. Have a great day, guys. Bye.